This is Malcolm341. In today's video, we're going to look at a free update to the light mapping toolbox. I've added some new features that make creating custom light map UVs even easier, so let's check it out. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this tool, I will do a quick little demo here. So you come up to the shelf if you purchase the full script pack, and it's called the L map button. Launch that, and it opens the light mapping toolbox here. And what this tool is used for is creating custom light map UVs directly inside of Maya. Often what I've found is you want to rely on Unity or Unreal to do your light map UVs for you for most of the project, but there's always going to be troublesome meshes at the end. So in the tool, you can click the checker map button and that will assign the different UV shell color checkers. And uh, you can actually change the plus and minus to change the checker size if you want to. From there, you can click the map one or light map button, which will switch all of the meshes in the Maya scene over to map one or a UV set named light map, which should be the second UV set in the list. We don't have a light map UV set there, so it's not doing anything. And then you can click create light map UVs from map one. So that's going to do something similar to Unreal, but like a little bit better and it's going to take your map one or your diffuse UVs and it's going to convert those into a light map. So we'll just click that and boom, there we go. So what it does is it goes through as it unfolds and lays everything out for you so there's no overlapping and everything is scaled the same texel density and it puts it in a second UV set named light map. And now we can switch back between our diffuse UVs here in map one and our light map UVs here in uh, map two. And you can also change the padding here to whatever you want, and you can click layout UVs to repad everything out if you want more or less spacing. Just change that to be whatever you want. That's really dependent on what project you're working on and what your average texel density is going to be per light map per unit. From here, you can also open up the UV set editor, Maya's default UV set editor. And you'll see there's nothing there, and that's because I have nothing selected. You have to have at least one component on the object selected or be in object mode. So you can just grab something here. And so there, now you can see we've got map one and we've got light map. And we can switch between the two by just clicking these convenient buttons right here. Go back to light map here. And then if you click this button again, it'll close and open. So it's a toggle, so you don't even need to go over there. I just included this so you can see what's going on. I don't actually really need to use this for this tool. And then finally at the bottom here, we have the delete light map UVs. And so it doesn't matter what map you're currently on. So I'm in the light map UV set right now. So if I click delete, it's going to get rid of those and it's just going to pop me back to map one. So at any time I can create. So you can kind of take any mesh you want, quickly create light map UVs. Oh, you're not happy with those. You need to do something else. You can just delete them and then just regenerate them. Okay, and here's a little bit more complex example. So these two assets actually share textures between the two assets and have a bunch of overlap. I'm just going to combine these two assets together so we can see what's going on. I'm going to turn the checker map on. And you can see this has got some stuff out of the zero to one range. It's got some overlap. It's got some packed stuff. It's just a big kind of mishmash of stuff. And that's because the texture is shared between the two assets. And that's totally fine for diffuse UVs, but that doesn't work for light map UVs. Light map UVs need to be laid out into the zero to one space and have no overlap. So same thing. It's going to take a little bit longer because it's just more shells or whatever, but just create map one UVs. Click it. Wait for it to go through and unfold all the meshes. It actually has like a lot of little pieces, so that's why the unfold is taking so long. Oh, and it looks like we had the spacing set way too high, so you can't even see what's going on. So let's reduce that down to eight pixels, and uh, we'll just click layout again. This is a good example because it actually shows you the iterative workflow. Okay, cool. So we got it. It's all spaced out eight pixels, and you can see just how many little shells there are. That's why it was taking so long to do the unfolding. It's actually a pretty complex mesh with all these little bolts and stuff. And same thing at any time, we can come back here and just switch between our diffuse and our light map UVs to see what's going on. And now what's really cool that I forgot to mention before is this tick box here, unfold, spin, and scale. This is a modifier tick box. So when you create light map UVs or you lay out UVs, it's going to do the layout and then it's going to try to unfold each shell. It's going to try to rotate each shell to be the best fit and then it's going to scale the shells to have even texel density. And that's great. That's usually what you want. But in some cases, you might have a shell that's not that useful, like maybe something on the back here. And you might want to actually grab those guys and scale them down because they're wasting space. So we can scale those guys down super small and we can turn that tick box off and we go to relay out again. It's going to ignore the scale and click it. And you can see it's also going to be way faster. And that's because it's not unfolding all these shells. So you can kind of get your initial layout and then you can actually tweak it. Like let's say we wanted this thing to be gigantic right? just so we can see what's going on. You wouldn't want to do this, but whatever. And then just relay out. 
And so it's lightning fast and you can edit stuff. So all these little shells here, you might find when you bake these that they all just come out black and that's because they're sub pixel information, meaning they're smaller than one pixel on your light map. So you can select all those guys, you know, and whatever, scale them up and relay out. And then boom, there you go. And then if you ever want to go back, it's pretty easy. You could either just delete your light map UVs and start over, or you can just turn this back on and just click layout again. And now it's going to take longer because it's applying all those unfolds to everything, but it's going to get you back to where you started. So there you go. So it's kind of non-destructive. Along with that, you can also turn this box off. And with the scaling, you can also do a scale, or you could even rotate this guy like that and it's going to remember the rotation so when we relay out see it's still rotated horizontally and the scale of whatever that thing is still scaled up or down so we could do that one thing to watch out for though is when you turn this off it's not going to re-unfold stuff so if you've made edits like this it's going to ignore those and it's going to leave that on so just something to watch out for all right, so now let's look at the new features that I've added. Okay, so the first new feature is you now have create light map UVs from map one, which is the way that it used to work. But now you also have create light map UVs from angle 30. And what this does is instead of copying pasting your diffuse UVs over into light map and then trying to unfold them and use those as the light map UVs, this will create brand new UVs, not based on map one, but instead based on the normal angle of your geometry around 30 degrees. And this can be super helpful when maybe the artist that built your diffuse UVs didn't do a good job or maybe he's welded some stuff together that can't unfold or the UVs just aren't working out and it's getting corrupted and it's always complaining about overlap or whatever and often you don't have time to go back and fix someone's artwork you just need the thing to bake and get to your lighting work so I'm going to corrupt the UVs here by just going to UV and doing a camera based planar map so those are not great diffuse UVs or map one UVs. Those aren't really going to translate good. Some of this stuff is welded onto itself. In fact, none of these cylinders will be able to unfold. They'll just error out. I'll get into this, what this, this tick box does here in a second. But I'm going to turn that off. That tick box didn't exist in the old version of the tool. So in the previous version of the tool, you'd click create from map one and it would do its thing and you'd get this you just get oh my god what, what's going on totally busted right and so then we would go delete light map uvs and then you would have to go back basically make these good so they're unfoldable and so i wanted to make it that even if some stuff was welded together because sometimes you actually do want to weld some uvs together so i added this feature uvs from angle and what this will do is it will ignore your map one uvs and just try to create the best possible unique unwrap for you so i'm going to click that let it do its thing. And boom, there you go. So in one click, look at this, it's all perfectly unwrapped, everything's good. It actually did a better job back here than what the diffuse UVs would have done because I actually separated those to overlap them and butterfly them. And then if you look closely here at the cylinders, they're also really well done. They don't have like an automatic map. They only have like a single seam across the entire thing. Now, this is super annoying and wasting a ton of space. And that's because it's a cylinder around this that's unwrapped. And so what you want to do here is either scale that down or we could even just turn this off and do a custom edit. We could like put a custom cut. So let's say we put a cut, I don't know, here, we'll just put a cut here just for, just to get rid of that super long shell. It's wasting a ton of space. And then you can just do a relay out and boom, we've already retrieved a bunch of space back and kind of so on and so forth, right? You can go in here and maybe these guys would be rotated 90 degrees, might look better and lay out and you know just work through it until it fills up as much of the space as you can you can try this tool and see if you get better results than converting your map one uvs so you kind of have two choices now and you also have an escape plan if someone provides you with a mesh that you need to bake and their diffuse uvs are poorly created or just can't unwrap for some other reason okay and next up we have this uh, new feature here called fix map one overlap this tick box and so what this does is when you create light map uvs from map one and it gets to a part of the mesh that it can't unfold and therefore will have overlap like self intersecting shell overlap it will try to automatically fix those faces by selecting them and applying a automatic map so we'll just check it out on this crazy shaped object here so you can see this is a mess right like this just has like a lot of planar mapping through it or whatever so in the old system if you create light map uvs from this like in the current version of the tool click it 
And it's like, okay, it unwrapped it, but like this is super wonky. That is wonky. Like, look at that shape it's creating because that's all projected top down. Look at all the smearing and stuff. And then this guy's just total junk. Like, it just can't unfold that mesh. And that's because all the EVs are welded onto themselves. There's no cut seams here. And so that is going to give you an error inside of Unreal or wherever you do your baking because that's not good. And in the old version of the tool, what you'd have to do is now like put cuts here and start to fix that up and then relay out. And that's fine. But I thought it would be better if it would just automatically select not all the faces and apply an automatic map, but just the error faces and then apply an automatic map. So I'm just going to delete life map EVs like that, go back to this, and then I'm going to turn this tick box on. This is on by default. And then I'm going to do map one UVs again. Boom. And then, so now you're not going to get any overlap. It's going to find the areas. I mean, this is still not good. This is a situation where I was like, I would probably just use the angle 30. But basically now that this tick box is on by default, anytime you click map one, you're not going to have any shells folded on top of themselves. So just delete that, turn that guy off. You can see we get this, which is unusable. But at least with this, now you get this and it's usable. You might not want it. You might still want to, you know, do angle 30 or whatever, but this is way better than applying an automatic map because it's going to use the parts of your UV shells that are already good and only try to automatic map the parts that are broken. Okay, let's go back to this mesh, select that guy. I'm going to generate light map UVs from map one with fix any errors. So click that. Okay, there we go. And then the final new feature, like we mentioned before, you might need to scale all of these little shells up. And I found it so annoying trying to go in here and get all of these. Like it's quite time consuming to get the small shells. So I wanted to make a feature where you could just select the shells smaller than a certain size. And that's what this guy does here. So find shells less than a percent of 100. So the zero to one UV space being 100% and anything smaller than whatever this percent number is, is going to get selected. So it's set to 0.1, so 1%. So click the button and it's going to go through and boom. And these are all the shells it considers to be less than 1% of the overall UV space in the zero to one space. And so that got too many. I just want these tiny ones. And so the cool thing is you can just go through and change this number to like, let's say, I don't know, let's go 0.2. And if you just press enter, you don't need to click the button. You can just press enter here and boom, it will actually go through an update. And so you can see it selected all shells smaller than 0.2%. And that still seems too big. So let's try 0.05 and see what we get here. There we go, it deselected some more stuff. So see, it selected all the tiny shells. And then from there, you can turn off the unfold tick box, scale those guys up, save yourself a ton of time, and then just do a layout. And boom, there we go, those guys got bigger. And then whatever, if they're still too small, you can scale them up again and just relay out. So that can be super handy, actually, because a lot of the light map errors will actually come from shells being too small to bake. If you've already purchased the full script pack, the UV pack, or the single script, this will be a free update, so you just need to download the same file again from your original email link to get the new stuff. If you haven't purchased the script yet, you can grab the script by itself in the UV pack, or you can get it in the full script pack, so take your pick. Thank you very much for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel would not exist. If you like this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have a far out day.